This head unit by Lamto has Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, a backup camera, and a front dash cam. Wait a second, didn't you just throw away another unit that is just like this? And quite frankly, I think this should be thrown right in the trash. Yeah, yeah, I sure did. Does this unit have the same fatal flaw and should this be thrown away too? Let's find out. First, let's go over what's in the box. We have the user manual, the backup camera, a suction cup mount, the charger, the aux, and trim removal tools. The box looks similar, and all this hardware is pretty similar to the other unit. We are not on the right track. Dude, what are you doing? We haven't even tested it out yet. Okay, come on. We're going to install this into my 1987 Mercedes 300D turbo. But before I move forward, let's compare it to the one that I did not throw away. It should have been thrown away, but I kept for demonstration purposes. So I lied. Can you tell which one's which? From the front, they're pretty dang similar. Maybe even the exact same. I'm not sure. But the difference is when you turn that over the units. This is a cheaper unit by C-Kane. Looks like it only has hardware right here. The power button, it doesn't even function correctly and it just seems quite cheap. The camera can move all around, which is nice. And this is the only mount that you can use on this unit. And you install it with an adhesive, or if you want, you could throw some screws down through your dash, which I would never do, especially in this car. Taking a look at the Lamto unit, it is much thicker. There's hardware all throughout it. The camera is much beefier, can still move around. The mount can rotate just like this. And you can also remove this mount, use a suction cup, which I am probably gonna do, or you could use this adhesive. And the power button is actually a nice power button. And the Lamto unit already comes with a 64 gigabyte SSD and it's powered by a Type-C USB. So overall, the build quality is much higher compared to that unit, much higher. Yeah, brother, that's what I'm talking about. Anyways, so I replaced this cheap CKN unit with this Lemto head unit a few videos back, and I was very impressed with how high quality this unit is and how well it did. So I am very excited to install this unit. Let's remove the backup camera, then the power supply, undo the suction cup, set this to the side. Now I'm gonna remove this and add the suction cup to it. Let's go ahead and install it. I'm thinking that's too much. I want it down low. With this type of mount, you wanna make sure that you're not blocking the camera. So how you need to have it low. Okay, I don't think this mount is gonna work here with the way my dash is set up. I have a steep decline here and a ledge here and the windshield is on a steep incline as well. So no go on this. So I'm thinking I want it about right here. Nice. Now we can plug in the unit. All right, so I routed the power cable coming through here, down the seam right here, then I stuffed it all in right here, then it comes back out right here and plugs in. The backup camera is plugged in right there, comes down here, up here, hides back there, comes around, then pokes out right there in the back. Moment of truth. Let's give the car some power. That's green. There you go. This is the head unit. Woo! First things first is getting rid of that noise. All right, done. Before we go over what was the fatal flaw with this unit and see whether or not it plagues this unit, let's go ahead and go over all of the features and stuff and how to connect to it. First and foremost, let's connect to Apple CarPlay. I have an iPhone and we need to connect to T86 pair and sure, there you go. Now we're connected. We go home. The audio is currently playing just through this unit right here. Not a bad sound. And Apple CarPlay has the standard, you know, apps that it typically does. From here, we can go to brightness, turn down and up the brightness, turn up, down and up the volume. We can go to the DVR. This is the front camera, that is the back camera. The reason we see lines go down like this is because I'm using LED lights in my shop. We can change the view, just the front, just the back, and both. We can turn on and off the mic. I like the mic on. We can take the photo. We can save the recording. We can lock it. 
we go to play. In order to see the recordings, we need to disconnect Apple CarPlay. For some reason, my phone has an issue. It's only my phone. Whenever I disconnect my Bluetooth, it still stays connected for some reason. I have to connect to my Wi-Fi to disconnect from Bluetooth fully. All right, so now we can go to DVR, press play. We can go on the photos that we took. These are the photos that we just took. We can go on the locked recording. We can go on loop recording. There you go. And of course it also has Android Auto. Playback is how we get to these recordings. Apple AirPlay and Android Cast, which I don't really like these. I'd never use them. And Bluetooth Music, we can just connect to our phone via Bluetooth. Let's go ahead and connect to Apple CarPlay again. Okay, that was pretty fast. That was like three seconds. Then you can go to the settings. You can change the recording resolution. I'm gonna use 1080p, you could do 2.5K at 720, but 1080p sounds better than me. Spit time, which is the loop recording, I'm gonna keep at three minutes. Microphone, keep that on. Image mirroring, you can mirror either image. Screen saver, uh, I'm gonna leave that off. Auto dimming, yeah, bring that a little lower. You can do reverse lines, but I don't have the reverse camera set up that way. You can change the date and time. You could format the card, you could reset the system, and we can look at the former version. Let's go to Tim Ferriss. Okay, so if you wanna connect this audio to your car, we need to pick a blank radio station. So you can hear, we have the fuzzies going on, and we are on 87.5. Here we go, home, audio output, FM. There you go. Now the fuzzies are gone. Go back to Apple CarPlay. Or uh, Ebola. Now, I mean, on a given day, there you go. Now hold on with me for one quick second as we go through the fatal flaw of the CKN unit. Listen to this audio quality. This is the Lanta unit. Ooh, I love some classic music. Especially with these classic speakers, it sounds so good. Okay, anyways, so keep that in, you know, the sound quality, remember that. Okay. On 87.5, 87.5, we have some fuzzies going on, but that's not what I'm talking about. Let's go home. Yeah. So the main reason you get the unit, the audio quality sucks on the CKN unit. And that is a fatal flaw for a lot of these units. So you gotta make sure you know what you're getting. Even if you connect that unit with this aux cord, the audio quality is the same and it's terrible. But this Lamto unit sounds so good, so crisp, and it does exactly what it says. Told you, brother. You just had to be patient. Yeah, he's right. If you want to check out this unit, be linked down below for your convenience. And if you want to see its direct competitor and quality, check out this video. This is Chris. Always appreciate and respect another. I'll see you next time.